Hey, it's Scott Devine here, founder and creator of Scott's Bass Lessons, and today I'm going to talk about how to string a bass correctly so you don't get all weird tuning issues and stuff like that. Check this out. So if you want to download the backing track you just heard, you can do that for free. If you're watching this on YouTube, after this video, just click the link below and it'll take you through to my website where you can get the backing track. Or if you're on my website already, scottsbasslessons.com, the link is just below this video. Now today I want to talk about stringing up your bass and how to do it so it keeps it in tune. If there's a certain few things that if you do wrongly, or if you're doing them rightly, it can really alter the way that your bass like stays in tune. So the first thing is when you're taking your strings off, if you're not cleaning the fingerboard, do it just one string at a time. So replace one string at a time. If you take them all off and then put them all on, you know, the tension of the neck will change. And for me, you know, if I take them all off, when it kind of sort of like changes the tension of the truss rod, then I'm sort of like messing around with the truss rod as well when I put the strings back on. And that's something you might not want to get into if you haven't done before. So to stop that happening, just change one string at a time and then that keeps the tension of the neck kind of, you know, the same. So you don't have to mess around with the truss rod. Obviously though, if you want to clean the fingerboard up, stuff like that, you know, maybe give the, the frets a bit of a polish, you have to take all the strings off. And that, you know, when you put the strings back on, you've got to take into consideration that the truss rod might have changed tension a little bit, or the strings, you know, might have altered the tension a little bit, and you need to give it a tweak here and there. So, when you're taking a string off, there's nothing really to sort of like be aware of, other than I personally, I like, you know, loosening the string first, then clipping it. Instead of just sort of like clipping all the strings, which I've seen loads, people just going, doo, 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 just clipping all the strings. And that, you know, the, the blooming truss rod in the neck is sort of like wobbling around like crazy. It's, you know, not that good for it. So just loosen off the string first and then cut it. You don't have to cut it, but it just, you know, it makes it easier to get out. Then simply, for me, I'm just threading that through and then taking it off here. So that gives us, you know, we can now replace the string. So here, the first tip is, and this is, I've done it loads, you know, make sure you're putting the right string on in the right, in the right order. Or well, not the right order, but you, for instance, I've taken off the A string here. I wanna make sure that I'm putting the A string on. I can count, you know, I couldn't even count on two hands, so I've done it quite a lot. The amount of times that I've, I've put the wrong string on and then I'm playing, I'm like, oh no, I need to go and buy another set of strings. So make sure you, you get the right string. And for this, in this case, it is the red one. Some of them are sort of like colour coded on the ends, some of them aren't. So make sure you check out which string you're replacing when you do it. Now, when you're putting your strings on, it depends what type of bass you have. In, for instance, on this bass, I could string it like this. So the, the ball end of the, the string is just sitting in the actual saddle itself, behind here, the bridge. Or on this bass, I've actually got through the body string in as well, so I can put it through the body. So I've got two different options there of what I can do. Now, I like through the body because it gives a greater angle over the actual saddle there. And that's really important to get a good angle over there. If you don't, you're gonna end up with some strange buzzes and stuff like that. And that is also true with the nut end as well, but we're gonna talk about that in a minute. minute. So yeah, if you, you know, if you have got the option of both, I'd always go through the body. But if you haven't, you know, doing it from the body side here is fine too. 
So this is the next big thing, is getting this string the right length. What you do not want to do is just put the string in and then start winding, because that way you're going to end up with masses of windings around the actual post here of the tuning peg. And this means that your strings are gonna start slipping, which means you're gonna have tuning issues. We don't want that. So the ideal length for me, what I like to do, is kind of sort of like, I would say maybe I'm trying to, I'm trying to guesstimate, guesstimate this, about 10 centimeters, maybe a little bit less. I kind of judge it on the amount of pegs. I always sort of like to take two pegs. So one, two away. So it's about, for me, it's about 10 centimeters. And then when you snip it, I like to bend it a little bit like that. And then you snip it just past the bend. I'll tell you why in a minute. So like that, and then I could just take that off. Now, by doing this, it means that the inner core of the string isn't going to, sn to slip. That's why I've put that tiny little bend in it. So it just grips it a little bit. If you just snip the string, what I've had in the past is that inner core slips a bit. And when I play it afterwards, the string sounds slightly dead compared with the others. So that's just something to bear in mind, a little trick there. Then you just simply slip it down into the tuning peg. Now this bit is super important. You need the string to go around the correct way. Look at all these, they're all going the, the correct way around, okay? So you need to have the, the string going around the correct way. And this is the key bit, okay? When I'm winding this string on, okay, the windings have to go above the string. They have to go above the string. If they don't, if you look at all these, see how the windings are above the string? And as I'm winding this on now, you're going to see how it stays above the string. And this is to get the right angle over the nut. If you don't have the right angle over the nut, your strings are going to be buzzing when you play open strings. There we go. See how it's forcing it down. It's coming over the nut and down. It's actually why this is here, this little string retainer here. It's to get the right angle, because if this wasn't here, these strings would just buzz when I played them. Now I can hear that's in tune. Um, because I've played bass a lot and I've heard an A string a lot. <laughs> if you don't, when you're tuning it up to, to pitch, you can play on the seventh fret here of the D string is the same as the fifth fret here on the A string. So you just want to make sure that they're exactly the same. And then you can double check that by doing the, the seventh fret on the um, the D string, you play that harmonic. So I'm not actually pushing the note down, I'm just placing my finger over the string, playing that harmonic, and then the 12th fret on the A string. So they're an octave apart, you can hear it. And then again. Almost there. Now, once you've got your string on, bearing in mind that we've, we've made sure that the, 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 the angle over the nut's correct and it's going down over the nut and the windings are above where the string is, then you've got to stretch the string after that because if you just start playing it straight away, the tune is going to go crazy. So all I do is I get my index finger, I put my palm on here, index finger, and then I just pull up like this. I'll just angle that so you can see it. And then let's move along. And that's just stretching every part of the string. Play again, and you'll hear the pitch has dropped. That's back up to pitch, and again. And just keep doing that until there's, the tuning is stable. There we go, that's pretty bang on. And then the last thing I do, and this is what loads of people miss out, is seat the string 
over the saddle. And this is particularly important with B strings and E strings. Don't just, at the minute, I've just put it on, so it, I know you can't feel this. If I feel that, it's just really smooth. I want to push down here, not too hard. Now there's a nice angle over there. It's break, there's like a break angle over the actual saddle. Just pushing down there. So if it was on the E string, I'd push down just a little bit and that would give me a nice angle. I don't want to just string the bass up and then just leave it because the, then the intonation of the bass is going to be a bit, you know, just not, not bang on. You need to get a nice angle over that there. So that's it, you're ready to go. Just do that with each string. So that's it for today. If you've got any of your own tips or you want to ask any questions or anything like that, please comment below. I want to hear from you guys. You can see on all my videos, I've got yeah, hundreds of comments below and that's because I'm focused on building the bass community. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, my YouTube channel, make sure you do so because that means you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And most importantly, if you haven't been to scottsbasslessons.com yet, do that now. We are one of the fastest and big, biggest growing bass communities on the internet today. And we've got forums, new videos all the time. So get over, check that out. And if you subscribe over there as well, you will be sent cool, awesome goodies too. Other than that, take it easy and get in the shed.